Thanks, Chantal. Let's get started. Okay, now we start here. Yep, that's good. Let's go. Mm, okay. Uh, a natural and important problem in the study of the leachy flow is the short time existence and uniqueness for the initial value theorem uh, problem. Uh, unfortunately, short time existence does not follow from standard parabolic theory. Since the leach flow is only weakly parabolic, in order to overcome the difficulty, Hamilton employed the Nash model inverse function theorem in 1982 to prove this theorem. And later, Dieter gave another proof by modifying the leach flow by a time dependent change of variables to make it parabolic which avoids the use of Nash model theorem. And today's talk, we will introduce the method of Dieterk. The main result is the following theorem. Okay, uh, let M be a uh, Compact Riemann manifold uh, without boundary. And then there is this, a positive time t and a smooth family of metric for t in zero to t such that. Okay, and then uh, if u one t for t and are two solutions. to the rich flow with g1 now equal to g2 now. Then for Okay. <clears throat> the reason that the standard poly PD theory could not apply to the rigid flow directly is that the nonlinear operator from G to its rigid curvature is not elliptic. However, the rigid deterred flow, okay, we write it. Mm, the rich detail flow is strong parabolic and hence admits short time existence and uniqueness by the parabolic theory. Uh, a simple calculation shows that the proven matrix of the solution to the rich detail flow under a one parameter family of diffeomorphism form a solution to the original flow. Uh, 
uh, I mean the rich flow. Okay. Um, now I will give the details of the proof of the term. Um, first of all, I, I will introduce the theory of nonlinear differential operators on vector bundles and to explain why the rich flow is not, <coughs> not parabolic. Mm. Uh, first of all, I will give the definition of, of the differential operator on vector bundles. Uh, assume that M be a smooth map, a smooth manifold. An E and E hat are two vector bundles. over M. And we assume that E plus is an open subset of E. Then a map P from all the section of E plus to the section of E hat is called of second order. If for any for any U in the we have Here, F is a smooth map from T star M direct sum of um, E plus to E. Is a smooth map such that the restriction to each fiber is contained in the fiber of the same point. Okay, here, the D is any connection. Is any connection of the tangent bundle of M or an E and E hat. Okay, this is the definition of a differential operator on vector bundles. Mm. Okay. A nest is the a special class of differential operator. It is called a linear differential operator. Okay. M E E hat as before. Mm. A linear differential operator is a map from the section of E to 
the section of e hat such that for any u in e l u equals to Okay, here lambda is a section of T M times T M times E star. And okay, no. Um, here, here the means the natural pair, natural pairing of vector bundles. <laughs> Clearly, any linear differential operator is a different differential operator. And we can define the principal symbol of error in any direction to be this. Sigma hat of a linear differential operator in any direction eta to be lambda at p um, eta times eta. Of course, this is a uh, element in uh, here. Eta is a uh, element of t star p m. And L is a, a linear differential operator. And from now on, we will assume that the two vector bundle is the same, uh, like this, E equals E hat. Okay. Uh, we want to introduce. Oh, okay, we, we, we did not this now. Now we assume that P is a is a differential operator of second order, and we take an element of the section of E plus, and then we define the linearized of P A U to be the following map. We write as D P U uh, to be the map from the gamma E to gamma E hat. Okay. We define by limit S to zero and one over S P plus H minus P U. Here, the limit is taken at each point of M. To see the, the linearized of L, uh, to see the linearized of P is a linear map. We write it as D, P, U, H. Uh, we see it at any point P, okay. It will write at one over S U plus H at P minus P U plus
uh, notice that the p is defined by a smooth function f. So we write. B square U plus SH at P. Okay, B square B U a minus F Okay, since we do this at each point, so in fact, we only to consider the, the restriction to of F to each fiber. Uh, in fact, we do this in a Euclidean space now. So you can write at DF P. Okay, we see that it is a linear map now. Yeah, since it is a linear map, you could write at the sum of three, three terms like this. Um, Eh and plus D F zero U with H. Okay, here this is the lambda we define. Uh, we said before, and this is new, and this is no. Okay. Um. Okay. Now we give another definition. Uh, assume that P is a, of course, is also a differential operator of second order and let U be a section of E hat. And now we say the operator P is to be elliptic for P at U. If the eigenvalue of the principal symbol of the linear right of P in any direction has three positive real parts. Okay, we write clearly. You say to elliptic for U at P. If the eigenvalue of Sigma hat B P U Okay, we know that it, it should be right as D F U two. Okay, oh, we only consider this part at P. Uh, it's the element of E hat P times E P. Uh, here we we let we change e hat to e.
Okay. And this is the definition of electricity. Uh, we give a remark here. In the above definition, we choose a connection on tangent bundle and E and E hat. But in fact, the choice of the connections do not influence the ellipticity. Uh, assume that D and D hat, D hat are two connections. And then we define the A to be the difference of the two connections. Now, A becomes a tensor because if we write X, F, U, okay, it should be D, X. And now it becomes D, X, U plus minus and this and this disappear. Okay, so we get F A F A X U. So we see that A is a section is a section of T star M times E star and E is the tensor, tensor field. Okay, mm, now we assume that X and Y are two vectors of vector field. And S is a section of T star N. E. And U is a section of E. Now we compute that dxs minus d hat xs at y u. Okay. And then you will write as a Minus S Y. Okay, now we see the the D X S minus D hat X S depends only on the U and the first derivative of U. So the principal symbols are independent of the choice of the connections. And then from now on, we are free to choose any connection we like in our uh, calculation. Okay. Mm -hmm. We like. Now we give an important example uh, is to apply the about theory to our digit flow. And here we let M G also be a Riemann manifold. And here we let E and E have to be the symmetric two tensor. Um, e plus to be the positive um, uh, of course is the open subset of e and now we 
divide p to be the map of each curvature. And then we want to show that the Litchi curvature is not an elliptic operator. <coughs> Choose any local smooth coordinates. The Litchi curvature can be written as um, R J K equal one over two um, G M L partial square J L G M K plus uh and other terms about the lower lower order. Uh, we have said that we can we are free to choose any connection we like. So we're using the Euclidean connection induced by the coordinates. Uh, and then in this connection, the linear light of reach at U is given by B. Here we just only replace the G by the H. Here H is a symmetry two tensor. Uh, I mean the E. Okay. To be the section of symmetry two tensor. Okay. And the principal symbol in any direction eta uh, we are given by this. Sigma hat B which G eta and it one over two G M L. minus eta j, eta k, and h m l. Uh, here, we just replace the partial to eta from this, from this to this. Okay, equivalent we can write as a more elegant form like this. Sigma hat. eta h to be one over two plus eta times h eta and minus h <clears throat> okay, now if we take eta to be uh, h to be eta times eta, 
Uh, we can check that. To be zero. Uh, it's easy to check this. Um, so we see that the linear map, the linear map of this is not a uh, isomorphism. In fact, we can we can compute the kernel of sigma hat d h of g in eta uh, to be a Where omega is a element of TPM star, and we know that the dimension of this is two V M. So we see that this map, this linear map, is not an isomorphism. So we see that the Lichy curvature is not an elliptic operator. Okay, we have finalized the first part of of the talk today. And next, we will introduce the Lichy detail flow. Uh, to begin with, we will introduce the definition of lead de derivatives. Now for any the most vector field on M. We divide L X to be a map from to the same type. Certified mm, for any f to be smooth function of n. Okay. Here, y is a vector field. It is in the change of the uh, with the tetris tetris. A times B equals to for A and B are uh, two tensor field of any type. <coughs> uh, using A to D, we can define Lx on any section on any type of uh, the tensor field of any type. But now we get a simple example. Uh, we also assume that S, X to be a tangent field and omega to be a two tensor like this times t star m. Okay, we want to compute L x omega. So we apply it to v and w. And from a to d, we know that it should be like this, x omega v and 
W minus Okay, this term we can use any connection to write it like this. And plus EXV W plus Omega V DX W and minus Omega. Okay, if we chose the connection to be symmetric, um, we can write, okay, write it like this. Mm, plus, oh, I mean this term and this term, we can combine to EVXW and this term and this term. Omega V D W X. Okay. Uh, now it's time to introduce the deter deter flow now. Mm. Here we assume that M U is a Riemann manifold. And um, now plus to be its Levi Civita connection. And then it's, it's a Lehman curvature is defined as x, y, minus d, y, e, x, z, and minus x, y, z. Okay, uh, and the reach of Nabla is the take trace of the is the take trace of the first first index and the last index. Okay, and now we assume that D is another connection. Uh, we assume that D is also symmetric. Then we can define the difference, difference tensor tau. And tau is defined by x, y to be D, x, y minus nabla x, y. We have shown that the difference of two connections is also a, is a tensor field. <coughs> And now we want to show that y minus d y x to be zero. Uh, in fact, y. <coughs> and this part minus this part to be x y. And this and this combines also a y two, so it to be is zero. So the tau is a symmetry tensor. <coughs> now we define v to be the vector field of tight trace on tau. It's a smooth vector field on M, and we define delta to be the last collection, take trace of g, d square, uh, not the number but the d, okay. 
we will show that. Depends. Depends only on G and DG. In fact, after a long calculation, we can show that it can be expressed by RD, um, G, and Tau. But we do not so so many details. In fact, to reach at J K, we know that it it should be M L partial J. <coughs> partial L, U, M, K. Or may there are other lower terms, but we do not write here. We don't care about the lower term, lower order terms. And then the G, J, K. Okay, we can write as G, J, K, M, L. Okay. Partial L G J K M. Um, maybe L. Okay. A uh, minus. Uh, in fact, the uh, there are three terms here, but it involved the, but it only. Depends only on the D, G, and G. So we can remove it now. G. And again, we can write this line, partial L, partial M, G, J, K. Because we remove all the low order terms. And now we want to calculate the LG, LVG. Mm, to start with, we write VI to be gamma, capital gamma, ML. Uh, here, gamma and, and the little gamma is the Christopher symbols of Nabla and D. Uh, notice that the little gamma is the Christopher symbol of um, D. So it is nothing about G. So we can remove it. Minus gamma I ML. And then we can write one over two G ML G I R. There are three terms now. Minus partial R G M L. Okay. So we can compute L V G J K now. Uh, we have we have do some simple calculation. We know that it's to be G J K I plus G I K V I 
us. Uh, the same reason, it is about a DG, so we can remove it. NGIK partial input. Uh, this and this, the difference is only evolved about the lower order term, so we can change the number of J to be partial J. GIJ. Mm. Partial KVI. The remaining is the law of the terms. Uh, and now, notice that the partial JVI, we can write. We can use this to here. So this becomes one over two G I K. Uh, oh, what's this? There's a little question in the chat. Um... James asks, do the commas mean covariant derivative with respect to D? Oh, yes, yes. It means the covariant derivative with respect to D, not to NABLA. Thanks, okay, James. Okay, Thanks, Shinta. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it could also be just co coordinate derivative since we're throwing away lower order terms. So I think it doesn't matter which one you use. Yeah. A good point. Plus partial J, partial L, G, R, M, plus, oh no, minus partial J, partial R, G, M, L. Okay. I J and then G M L G I R partial K partial M partial K partial R G M L and now. We can combine the six terms like this minus G M L partial J partial L G M K plus partial M partial K G J L minus partial J, partial K, and G, M, L. Okay, we have computed three terms. Um, this one, and this one, and this one. So we, we, we can see that the uh, which curvature plus LVG plus La plus G uh, depends only on D, G, and G. Okay, now we return to the rigid D third floor. It is written like this, T over partial T to be Minus L V T G H T. Okay, we have noted it depends on 
the lower order term. So it can be right as G R T at lower order term. So if we calculate the the principal symbol of this this equation, we will know that it is straight strong parabolic. So it has the short time existence and uniqueness by the standard parabolic theory. Okay. In that the first term there, the Laplacian. The Laplacian G hat means you're taking the trace by G hat, but the connection is D. Is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean that it takes G hat, but it takes trace of the G hat T. Okay. And now we want to know the relationship of the Ricci detail flow and the original Ricci flow. But before that, we should introduce some notions. Uh, we give a definition here. A time time dependent better field. is a map, smooth map like this to Tn, such that for each T and each P, it is an element of Tpn, okay. Oh, another definition. A integral curve. of a time-dependent vector field V is a curve from J hat to M. Here, J hat is a sub-interval object such that uh, gamma T for T, Okay. Uh, what's the time? Now we give a zero now and end the talk today. Yeah, I think there's only about five minutes left. So uh, maybe minutes, just give the yeah. theorem, yeah. Assume that V is a time dependent vector field on M like this. Then there exists a smooth map we write as theta from j times j times m to b to m such that <coughs> t if we define gamma t to be theta t, t now p. Then gamma is a integral, integral curve of v such that, okay, uh, I mean that it says satisfy the initial condition with gamma t now to be p. Okay. And theta t, t now p. T, t1.
<coughs> and we have C, the smooth map from P to theta T1, T0, P is a diffeomorphism of M. Um, T2, T1, theta, T1, T0, P. Okay, each be T. Okay. Uh, it seems that a long theorem, but, it, but it's, an, in fact, it's very simple. It's just to say if a curve moving according to the vector v, then is if at time t now it's at a position p, then we write the position at t to be theta t t now p. So gamma defined like this to be the integral curve of v, and then in fact in this this moving gives a diffeomorphism of m. And he satisfied some conditions like like group action on the end. Okay. Uh, we can stop here. Yeah, okay, that looks like a good place to stop. Thanks, Xintao. Nice talk. Um, um are there any questions for Xintao? Hi, uh, I had a quick question. Um, very nice talk. Okay. Uh, so maybe I can just try and summarize my understanding and you can tell me if I'm wrong. So basically the Ricci flow, we can write it as sort of the Laplacian of G plus lower order terms, but the Laplacian itself depends in a very nonlinear way on G. Um, and so we get that the symbol has this kernel. And so we define this new evolution term, which I guess can be written as a Laplacian of a fixed uh, a fixed connection, which no longer depends yes. on G. And so that then that is the symbol is then positive definite. And so that's kind of the motivation, right, to do this. Yeah. And then I assume there's going to be some diffeomorphism that takes us back to recover uh, yes. the original reach. Uh, we okay. were sure that the two the relation of the two different flow, in fact, it's just a change of the variables. Uh, if we use a suitable time-dependent diffeomorphism to prove better metric, we give the uh, another flow. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. So yeah, I guess the idea is that we want this fixed connection, and then that mm. kind of gets us out of the woods. Cool. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, good. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot, Shintao, and uh, we will resume at the same time next week. See you then. Thank you. Okay.